Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see the ones that are here today, Felicity, Loren, and Zachary. They have come faithfully every week, and today is our last, our last video lesson, and we'll be back together. I hope that all of you are planning to be here next Sunday because it's going to be a really special day. We're going to make it a really special time. In fact, that's the time for our review lesson. And you know what we do on review lesson day. We play a game. And I'm going to have special treats for you. And then we'll also uh, do our drawing, uh, our drawings on our charts, that you'll, your attendance charts. And so make sure you have there something in mind. There are lots of things to choose from for the life of David. Oh, lots of, lots of ideas where you could uh, use as a picture on your chart. But we're glad that everybody has <clears throat> been faithful to follow Sunday school and the puppets. Haven't they been a treat? The, I think the adults look forward to looking at the puppet videos as much as the kids do. But um, we're thankful that we can return to our normal schedule next week. Very thankful. And so um, be sure that you come next week, though, if you possibly can, come a little bit early. I'd like to really start at 945 instead of the 10 o'clock Sunday school time because we have a lot to cover next week and we don't want to be rushed. So if you could do that. You could come at 945, and if y'all, if you could pass the word around that to different ones, and I'm going to try to remember to uh, call everyone and remind you that we're having Sunday school together right here in the classroom, okay? And uh, make sure that you have uh, your Bible memory verse uh, memorized and ready to recite, and we'll put your sticker on um, on your on your chart. We'll, have the, we'll make the new charts, and we'll have the special treats. So all of that to look forward to for next week. It's going to be fun, and it's going to be a blessing to be back together. Okay, we're going to have our prayer time now, and we have some special prayer requests um, for Miss Kelly Love, who is our missionary to Brazil. She has been sick, and... Um, uh, I don't know if she's completely well yet, but they did find out that she... Uh, she is feeling better. She is not. She doesn't have the pneumonia anymore. So that is really an answer to prayer. And then uh, they did a test. They did tests on her to see if she has the COVID-19 uh, virus. And we just pray that she will not have that. And so let's continue to pray for her. And then please continue to pray for Saeed's grandmother that she will get well. But even more than that, that she'll be saved. And pray for Mrs. Banks. You might have heard that Mrs. Banks was bitten by a fox. And she's having to um, have special shots for this. And um, so pray for her as she goes through this process. And pray that she will, that she will be well and she'll be okay. Okay, um, let's continue to pray for different ones that you can think of. You pray silently while I pray out loud. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this good day. Thank you that we can open up the Word of God and we can read it and learn from it and learn from the lives of those who lived long ago and recorded, their lives are recorded in your Word, and we can learn from them. We've... Uh, Read in your word in the New Testament that, the, that all scripture is given for our learning, for uh, us to learn by and to know how to live our own lives. And we pray, Lord, that you would um, just bless the word of God today as, as it's given. And Lord, we pray that you would um, help uh, Grandpa Chambers, Lord. We continue to pray for him. pray that you would just... Um, Help as uh, he goes through these treatments. I pray that you would make him strong and that you would help him to, for him to recover and to heal and to, that you re restore his health again. And Lord, we pray that you help our pastors. He prepares now for uh, 
sermons and for teaching. Lord, we thank you again for him, and we pray that you would just lead him as he uh, prepares to lead us. Lord, we pray for our time together today, that you bless the Word of God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing the song, He Paid a Debt He Did Not Owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. We'll we'll sing it twice, okay? So those of you here, sing out loud with me, okay? He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Some of you might have heard that for the first time here. And hopefully you're learning that. Come back to Sunday school and we will sing it again. Let's sing it one more time, okay? He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. Very good, very good. Okay, now we're going to read over our verse one time together. Then you close your eyes and we'll recite it. And then when you come next Sunday, be ready to to say your verse without looking. Okay, so you can get your sticker. All right, let's read it together. 1 John 1, 8 and 9. Everybody, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Very good. Okay, so um, now look, let's close your eyes. Okay, almost forgot that part. Close your eyes, everybody. And say, say this verse or these two verses without looking. Ready? 1 John 1, 8 and 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, eight and nine. Very good. Okay, let's turn in our Bibles to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 21. If you'll just turn in your Bibles to uh, that chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 21, and then later on I'll tell you what verses that uh, we will be reading from. And by the way of um, review, remember last week that we talked about David and Jonathan's friendship and they became very, very best friends. I mean, they were very loyal. They promised each other, remember? They promised each other that they would always be friends, that they would be loyal to each other and that they would, if if either of them were to to die and, and the other... Um, would take care of that one's family. They promised that to each other. And so they had a wonderful friendship. And God used this friendship to help protect uh, David from jealous King Saul. His jealousy was growing and growing and would cause big problems. And today we're going to continue from where we were last week. And uh, remember, David and Jonathan had said they, their goodbyes. And remember, they were so sad that they might not, might not see each other ever again. And so they cried, and their hearts were broken because 
They both knew it was wrong. There was this was senseless that that the king should be hunting David and wanting to kill him because David loved the king and he he uh, respected King Saul and he never would would hurt King Saul. We're going to find out today that he had many opportunities to uh, kill King Saul. Saul, but he chose not to because he knew that Saul was uh, God's anointed, that God had made him uh, the king of Israel at that particular time, and that eventually David himself would be king, and David would just wait until that day. But for right now, he was having to run for his life to keep away from, from King Saul, knowing that God was with him and that God would put him on the throne as king in, in God's own time. And so, I, um, if you ran off your copies uh, of your Sunday school papers there at home, then you can take those out now. And those uh, of you here, if you can pull your papers out that I gave you, the class notes papers in Zachary, you may pull your papers out of your desk and get your pencils ready. You may use pencils or crayons or both. And what we're going to do is uh, you're going to draw a picture of each event that I will, uh, that I've displayed here on the board. And as I talk about each one, then you'll see what uh, we need to, um, to draw there for your class notes. This is a different way of, of um, doing our class notes together. And I think you will really enjoy this. And after you have all of these on your class notes sheet, you can go back and teach the lesson yourself. And it will show you the different places where David had to run and hide, where he ran and hid to, to keep away, stay away from King Saul. And so as you do that, listen carefully, though, while you're drawing and you're busy, um, be sure that you're still listening, okay, to the lesson and uh, not just block it out. Yes, Zachary? What am I doing? Okay, well, as I go through the lesson, Zachary, you'll understand exactly what that picture is all about, okay? Right. Okay, so <clears throat> he was running for his life and Saul was chasing him, right? Not close to him, but sometimes he got really close, yes. The first city he went to was the city of of Nob and there was a high priest there at Nob at the city of Nob <clears throat> and he um, when David came in David and his men were hungry and they were tired and ah Ahimelech the high priest helped David and his men and he gave them he gave them bread to eat if you want to pick up your pens or your crayons bread to eat and you know what else? A sword. But this was a special sword. That was Goliath's sword. The very sword that, that David had used to cut off King, uh, uh, Goliath's head. And so now that they had kept that sword here in the city of Nob. And so now it belonged to David and that was a weapon that he would have with him. So this was at the city of Nob, N-O-B. And so, now I'll tell you this. Um, Ahimelech, the high priest, did not know, did not even realize that David no longer was fighting for King Saul, that he was, uh, he didn't know that, that um, David was running for his life. And that King Saul was chasing after him. If he had known that, perhaps he never would have helped David. I don't know, but we're gonna know. We're gonna find out later that sadly, Himelech and the pre other priests are gonna get in trouble because of helping David by giving them bread and giving David uh, the sword of Goliath. Very sad situation. But uh, the next place he went was to. Um, the Philistine city of Gath. Do you know who lived in Gath at one time? Goliath. Goliath did. Goliath lived in Gath. And that's where David went. This was a city that belonged to uh, 
to the Philistines. So he went to the enemy camp, went to the enemy camp to, uh, to hide, to run to. And so when he got there, oh, there's another problem that, that arose. There were some of king, the uh, servants of King Achish um, who said, wait a minute. That's David that has killed thousands of our own men, thousands of, of Philistines. That's who this is. And we're, he's here in our city, in our area. And oh my, David thought, what am I going to do? Here he was standing right there in front of the authorities and <clears throat> he had nowhere to run. He thought of a crazy plan. In fact, you know what he did? He acted crazy. He acted crazy and he pretended that he was insane. Here is our next picture for you to draw. He pretended that he was insane. He started scratching at the gate and he started drooling. He started drooling and he let his, the drool run down his face and onto his beard and he acted like he had no control of himself and the king looked at him and said what have you done you have brought this crazy man david is insane and you brought him to stand before me get him out of here get rid of him Whew, that was close wasn't it i mean they could have had david right then but David was able to escape because God still was looking after David, wasn't he? He was not going to let anything happen to David because he had a plan for David's life to be king. And so next he went to a cave. He didn't have a, his home to go to anymore, but there were caves all around. So he went to uh, the cave of, the, of Adullam. And when he went to the cave of, of Adullam, his family was there. Well, I'm sure he was encouraged by that. And 400, here's the cave here, if you want to draw this cave. Um, his family was there and 400 men that were loyal to him and that uh, wanted to help him in his flight away from King Saul were in the cave right around there to help him and help protect him. So David became the commander. He, he was their commander. And he had, of course, you know that the Philist, that, that um, King Saul's army consisted of 3,000 or more uh, soldiers compared to David's 400. But who did they have on their side, though? God. God was on David's side. So he had the majority, didn't he? So... Uh, draw your cave there on that on that particular one, and then, meanwhile, King Saul found out. Here's the sad part that I was telling you was going to come up. He found out that the high priest and the other priests of Nob had helped David and his men, had given them something to eat, had given David uh, the sword. He found all that out. And he was mad. And so you know what he did? He sent his men to Elimelech and the priests and had all of them killed. Wasn't that sad? And Elimelech didn't even know that he was helping, actually, Saul, who Saul considered to be his enemy. And so they lost their lives. Now, as David ran to get away from all, uh, from Saul and to stay out of his sight and to be safe. He helped others as he went along the way. He uh, was not selfish. He was always, David loved people and he loved uh, those that, that needed help. And so he went um, one time and he helped to save uh, the people of Keilah from the Philistines. And, but Saul found out that he was in the city of Keilah and so he thought, oh, I am right in the position that I have them trapped. Oh, I have David trapped now. And he thought, oh, this is the best situation I have been in. He thought, I've got him. And just at that time, a messenger came 
a messenger came to King Saul and said, the Philistines have just attacked us. So Saul left what he was doing and ran off to uh, check on what was happening with the Phil Philistines attacking them. And so God had taken care of him again, and he was able to escape that. And they, he was on the run again, on the run. And so Saul, though, eventually caught up with David, and he caught up with him in the wilderness of Maon. And uh, there on a mountain, and he was chasing David on a mountain. Saul was on one side of the mountain chasing him, and David was running on the other side of the mountain, trying to get away from him, keep away from him. And so they were closing in on David, at least they thought they were. And uh, <clears throat> so let's see, I think the next one is, is sort of a, a mountain or a hill here. It shows that they're that uh, King Saul is chasing there. And so uh, he caught up, he almost caught up with him. He was chasing him around the mountain. And so this lasted for a while, but God, God protected him and God helped him to get away from there. Okay, and next Saul learned that David was in the wilderness of En Gedi. Now, this is really interesting how God took care of David. And so there were lots and lots of caves in the area of the wilderness of En Gedi. And there was, it was a nice area to, to, camp, to uh, be able to camp out in. And they had fresh water and lots of greenery and plants and trees. Lots of caves, like I said. And so David and his men had gone into the cave and they had um, gone to the back of the cave. And I'm sure he had some... That are, were men that were positioned so they could see if anybody or anything entered into the front of the cave. But do you know who came into that cave at En Gedi? King Saul came into the cave. But he came by himself. No soldiers there to guard him. He came in and he was just in there a short time. And the men, the, the soldiers there, uh, David's soldiers, and they probably had to whisper, David, look, there he is right here, right within reach. We can kill him right now. Just let us go up there and we'll do away with him right now. And so uh, King David, I mean, not King David, he wasn't king yet. He said, no, he is God's anointed. But do you know what David did? He reached over there with his knife and he cut off the end of uh, part of the end of uh, of King Saul's robe that he had on. He cut off a piece of it, like you see in this picture, and this is what you draw now. He cut off a piece of it. He had something in mind. He thought, "I am this close, and I'm going to show him that I could have. I was so close. I could have killed him, but I love him. I respect him. I want him to know." And so. He did that, and then I'm sure David withdrew and got back a ways in the cave. And then King Saul left the cave. He left the cave and went on down the hill a ways. And when he did, after he did, David called out to him. And he said, look, King Saul. And King Saul turned around, and he, and he heard David's voice. And he probably saw him. Maybe he was close enough he could see him. He said, look what I have. I have a piece of your robe. You were in the same cave where my men and I were. And I got this close to you. I could have killed you, but I'm not going to kill you. And I don't want to kill you. And I will not. And I, I want uh, everything to be right with us. And there's no need for you to chase me like an animal all around the mountains and the hills. And so I'm going to read to you. If you'll turn to, let's see, I said 21. Let's go to 24, chapter 24 of 1 Samuel. Make sure I'm in the right place. Okay, when he held that up, everybody, when he held that 
a piece from David's robe up, was he saying, look what I did. Look how close I was. You think he was bragging and he was boasting? No, he wasn't. He wasn't. I believe that he wanted the king to realize that he loved him. And there was absolutely no reason he should be chasing him. Now, chapter 24, verses 8 through 11. See what it says. David also rose after, afterwards and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. Does that show respect and honor? It does, doesn't it? And David said to Saul, Wherefore, wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt? Why are you listening to men that tell you that I want to hurt you? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eye, did, my eye spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and kill thee not, know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand, and I have not sinned against thee. Yet thou huntest my soul to take it. And he was just begging him, please don't listen to those that are lying to you that I want to hurt you because I do not. And you know what? Saul said, oh, I have sinned. Mm. I wonder how sincere that was because he was going to continue to chase him. He said to David, he said, I have sinned and I have done wrong. And that is... Um, Verse, let's see, 17, verse 17, he said Dave, to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And then skip down to verse 20. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. How about that? He even admitted it. I know that you're going to be king. Who would, who should have been next to being king? To be king? Who's, uh, well, remember, usually after a king dies, their son. son. So it should have been Jonathan. Jonathan. But God said that David would be, that, that God would take the kingdom away from, from King Saul because he, he would not follow what God said. He would not be obedient. So uh, time passed and word came to Saul uh, that David was camped out in the hills. Now, did everybody keep up okay with your, uh, with your drawing? Mm -hmm. Everybody do it okay? The last one was the, was, the, uh, was the knife and then the piece of cloth from his, from his garment. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> King Saul was going to break his promise. He said he would not hurt. Oh, I won't hurt you. I did wrong. I won't hurt you, David. Of course, David didn't believe that because he knew he had broken promises before. And so David continued to hide. And so the time came, David, uh, Saul heard that <clears throat> where David, heard about where David was, um, was hiding. And so he got his captain, Abner, and... Uh, three, his 3,000 soldiers together and they went out to the hills, to the mountains and they camped out for the night. They were going to stay and sleep there overnight and continue their chase of David. And so it was time to go to bed, time to sleep and, and Abner was responsible to be the lookout to make sure that King Saul was safe. You know, President Trump has lots of bodyguards, that secret service men that are on the lookout all the time and protect him. Well, King Saul had men like that. And Abner, the commander of his army, was responsible for this. And so God caused 
a deep sleep. I mean, those men slept well that night because God caused a deep sleep to fall on them. And so <clears throat> David and his men, of course, knew because they had kept spies out knowing where King Saul was all the time. And so one of David's spies said, this is where they are, not too far from us. And so David said, okay, I have a plan. I need someone to volunteer to go with me down to the camp of King Saul. We're going to walk right into the camp of King Saul. <gasps> Wouldn't somebody wake up? No, God had a faith, David had faith and trust in God. And he was following God. And so he said, would anybody volunteer? Well, his nephew, Abishai, right away said, I'll go with you. So David and Abishai, his nephew, uh, went down to the camp. And they sneaked into the camp. And they went right over to where King Saul was sleeping. Nobody stirred. Even Abner, the commander, was fast asleep. Should he have been awake and looking around? He should have, shouldn't he? He was fast asleep. Nobody heard David and Abishai uh, sneaking around their camp. And right at, at King Saul's head where he slept was his spear, his great big spear, and his cruise of water. His cruise of water was like a, a jug of water, a bottle of water. <clears throat> and so... He had all that right at his head. And so uh, Abishai said, oh, he said, David, we're right here at him. All I have to do is take the spear and kill him. And I won't have to, I won't have to aim twice. I won't have to do it the second time. I will hit my target the first time. Let me get rid of him. Let me kill King Saul. David said no. He had told them before. He is God's anointed. You may not kill him, but I want you to take his sword, his spear, up out of the ground. And I want you to take his cruise of water. and We'll take it back to camp to prove that we've been here. Okay, so on your paper now, you, if you will draw the spear and the cruise of water. Okay, can you do that? Okay, good. You have the spear colored. All right. So, <clears throat> to prove they had been there, they took those things with them. And so, he got back to camp and got settled. And then, you know what David did? David yelled out across the valley and said to to uh, talking to Abner. Who was Abner? He was the... Person I was supposed to be guarding. Yes, and he was the commander of King Saul's army, right? Yes, he was supposed to be guarding. Correct. And so he stood up, stood up and he called out to Abner. He said, Abner, are you awake? Are you awake, Abner? Oh, I'm sure that woke Abner up in a hurry, don't you think? And probably everybody else, I don't know. But he said, Abner, aren't you supposed to be um, protecting your master tonight, King Saul? Aren't you supposed to? Have you been awake? And he sort of teased him, you know. He says, someone came into your camp tonight and could have killed your master, could have killed King Saul. This is not good, Abner. As the Lord liveth, you are worthy of death. You should be put to death. And he should have for not taking care. That would have been the punishment he should have gotten. He said, look, look what I have. I have your king's spear and his cruise of water. Where is that usually? Look over there where your master was, was sleeping. The spear and the cruise of water weren't there. David had, it, had those things. And he said, <clears throat> excuse me. So he scolded Abner for not protecting his master, the king. Um, either he or Abish Abishai could have easily killed the king. 
So then the king was wide awake by then, and he heard David, and he said, David, is, is that the voice, my son, is that the voice of David? And so then David said, yes, sir, and he bowed to him. And he said, yes, it is. He said, you don't need to chase me. You don't need to chase me. Look in verse 20, see what it says. It says, and David swore unto Saul, and Saul went, um, am I on the right one? Oh, make sure. I think I'm in the wrong chapter. But he told him, he said, you're hunting me like an animal. He said, but there's no need to. Please have mercy on me and do not chase me and do not worry that I have, uh, that I'm going to, to kill you because I'm not. He said this many times before. So then again, David, uh, Saul admitted that he had sinned and he promised again not to kill him, not to. But David knew that he could not trust King Saul to keep his word. David was more <clears throat> interested. He believed that it was more important to be righteous and obedient to God rather than to get revenge. He knew that God would get the revenge and that God would put him in the place that he wanted him to be when, as king when he wanted him to be king. And so <clears throat> we can learn from David that we need to be merciful and not try to get back at people uh, to make ourselves feel better. And we, and we, might, <clears throat> we might be justified. We might be... Um, the one that is in the right, but try to get get back at someone is sin. Like like um, God does not want us to do that. Okay, let's all bow our heads and we're going to close in prayer. And then I want you to look at. Uh, we'll show these pictures one more time. These drawings to see if you got all of them. Heavenly Father, thank you that we're able to study your word today, and learn that the attitude that David had is the attitude that we want to have. We want to have attitudes that please you and not vengeful and hateful attitudes like Saul had. And I pray that you'd help us to think about these things and not to, um, <clears throat> when we feel mad, when we feel like that we want to get back at someone, that you will give us the strength and the grace not to, but to be obedient to you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's look over here at these drawings one more time. You could tell the story of David's, of the places where he went to flee from Saul uh, just by going and looking at your pictures. Did everybody get all of these? Were you able to keep up okay? Okay, very good. Okay, so don't forget now, be here Sunday morning at what time? 9.45. Nine 9.45 if you possibly can be. So hopefully we'll see all of you then. Goodbye.